now having our great friend Paul Guido meet with us. Um, he is a security professional based at a San Antonio financial institution where he works as a security janitor. So uh, Paul, if you would go into that, I'm sure all of us in the space understand what that is, but for all of us newbies, uh, please elaborate. Thanks uh, again. Yeah, uh, so I guess I'm up and running now. Uh, you got it recording and all that stuff? Yes. Yeah, recording. Yeah, I, work in, I work at a San Antonio financial institution. And uh, if you check my LinkedIn, it doesn't say where I work because um, any security professional that works at a financial institution or for that matter, just about anywhere, you're a target. <laughs> the more information you put out there on LinkedIn and everything where else about where you are and where you work, the easier it is for someone to do something to get into, well, you. Um, they can find out about you, your hobbies, your habits, and uh, find that exact lure that's going to catch you in a fish. So um, because of that, I put security janitor. Um, I, uh, I work with a, a security team uh, and it's it, they're great people, but it's I haven't been there that long. So changing employers. For over 20 and a half years, I did work at Broadway National Bank. Um, so, and around February, uh, I changed and I went to another financial institution here in town. And uh, it was a very good move for me. Uh, and uh, I, I get so many questions. Why? Why would you leave Broadway after t over two decades of work? And it, 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 there are a lot of answers to that, right? And it really depends on... Um, Point of view and what's going on did did i leave broadway bank or did i go to this new place that i was working at and for the most part i was going to the new place that i'm working at uh there were some things that were going on at, at the office like most any office uh if you've been there two decades or even two years that is happening that would make you want to maybe i should find another job but maybe i'm not going to go and actively go do that but the opportunity that I was provided, uh, it was beyond par. So that's kind of why uh, was the primary reason that I that I left. And we're going to kind of go over uh, those kind of decision makings and stuff. First, let's go ahead and oh, I get there we go. I'm a security uh, team professional at a security financial institution here. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, I'm not that exciting, but uh, it's mainly security related stuff uh, at Radio Teacher um is my uh, handle on twitter uh i do have a poll out there uh, which i'm going to discuss so uh, it's did uh, did you leave your last job or did you go to your new job and and uh, no right answer it's just uh, how you ended up doing it if you would go out and look for that uh, twitter poll i also have that in discord right now with track three um breakout so if you want to do any communication back to me, the best way to do it is with track three um, uh, in track three breakout inside Discord for um, B-Side San Antonio. So please, uh, you know, you have any questions, comments or anything else, I'm going to be asking some questions. It would be great to get some feedback on some of these different uh, items because uh, interactive is really the way I like to run a uh, a talk and stuff. Uh, I always ask lots of uh, lots of questions. I mean, really, why would I leave? Why would I leave after two decades of, of service at, at, a, at an institution like that? Um, well, I didn't have this problem, but a lot of people do. That Sunday night dread. Is this like, you know, I really don't want to wake up in the morning or drag myself to that job. Those are common, common problems. And if you're having a lot of that, uh, it might be time to, to move on. Uh, you can't be yourself. You have to be somebody else. You can't uh, interact the way you want to interact with people. Um, uh, that could also be a problem. Uh, I recently um, saw a, a wonderful um, three speaker event in February before all events were really shut down. All three of the speaker were prominent uh, uh, in their field and uh, all of them had uh, had different types of harassment uh, uh, against them over the years, um, primarily because they were female. You know, it, it's sad to think that, that uh, they couldn't, uh, you know, be themselves and they had to 
you know, take terrible conversations with these people that she would, they were working with. Um, and almost all of them had a story like that. So um, if you can't be yourself uh, at your position for whatever reason, whether it's uh, harassment or whatever, uh, uh, so that might be an, another good reason to go out. No advancement. Um, and this is a real big deal for a lot of people. Um, I like doing interesting things as long as I'm doing interesting things. Generally, uh, advancement is not one of my big goals. I'm not ever looking to become a CIO. I'm not ever looking to become a, a CISO, really, or anything like that. I'm, I like doing, you know, the day in, day out work of security, blue team type type stuff. That's that's my bread and butter, and that's what I really enjoy. So for me, you know, that I'm not going to be a, you know, a CISO someday or CIO or whatever. That that's never really been a big impetus for for me personally. But there are many people out there. Those are the goals that they have, and and they're very achievable, by the way, as well. Yeah, no more joy. <laughs> so yeah, it's almost like the Saturday Sunday night dread, right? Uh, no more joy in 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 your work. You, you just everything is just drudgery. It's it's you know, office space times 10. So you get to that point, yeah, you, you really need to, uh, to, to consider uh, finding another position. Unstable workplace. You know, the management's changed three times in five years and everybody started new initiatives and nobody's completed anything and it, uh, or you have other things going on. Maybe some people are, you know, buyouts or going public or not going public or, um, there's all kinds of different stability issues in, in the workplace. Um, maybe they are, are, you know, having issues with their own finances internally to an organization. Uh, especially right now with COVID-19, there are going to be so many, sadly, um, so many different um, companies that are going to be going out of business. Uh, and when that happens, it, it's going to uh, leave a lot of people looking for more work. So. What about the possibility on the new job? You really want to check out who you're going to be working for. And I'm talking like before you even think about walking into an interview, even before even you apply to a, a position at that company, you really want to know what they're all about. You want to know their culture. You want to know something about their teams and everything else. Sort of like what I'm not doing on LinkedIn and some of the other places and uh, Facebook, whatever, saying where I work, um, same thing. Uh, a lot of people do. So you can go out and find out a lot of things about the uh, your coworkers and things that you're going to do. Do a little OSINT. Uh, if you don't know about OSINT, uh, there's other tracks that talk about doing open source intelligence. And uh, so go check out the uh, people that you're going to be working with. Um, another way to check out what's going on at different organizations is be involved in the community. Things like this right here with B-Sides, um, things like uh, Texas Cyber Summit here in San Antonio. Um, get involved with different organizations. And what you'll do is you'll, you'll over time, create an, a network of people to work with. Uh, there are two other groups that I can really come off the top of my head to uh, network here in San Antonio. One of them is the Alamo ISC Squared Group. All you have to have is an interest in cybersecurity, and you can uh, join up and go to their meetings. Uh, their meetings are all virtual. They had just had a wonderful meeting on, on Thursday with a great talk, and uh, I think 65 people were in attendance for that, that lunch uh, meeting. Uh, it really, really well done. The other one, of course, is uh, near and dear to me. I'm on their board as the Alamo ISSA. Um, they're going to be switching to monthly meetings instead of the big quarterly meetings that they're, they were doing um, just because it fits better into people's schedule um, than uh, the larger meetings do when you're talking virtually. So uh, those two organizations here in town are really good to uh, get involved with. Also, Saha, right? The San Antonio Hackers Association, if you're here in San Antonio. Uh, if not, Wherever you may be, which I might be getting people watching this from all over, find out what your local organizations are. Go to International ISSA or, or, or ISC Squared's main website. Find something that's going on in security uh, in your area and start attending. 
uh, most of the uh, organizations out there worldwide are very open for new members and are looking for new members. So uh, definitely uh, network. But once again, when you're looking for that job, networking helps. Also check out the people that you're going to be working with. Check out the people in the place, right? So depending uh, how portable you are, I mean, when I was single, I, I could move, I could do whatever, it was no big deal. Married, have kids maybe, it's harder to uh, venture around. So let's say you work 40 miles from your, from your uh, employer, you live 40 miles from your employer, that could be quite a commute. Um, could you live and move closer? Would it save fuel? Would it save whatever, time? Uh, Frustration, right? Who wants to sit in 1604 traffic for um, 45 minutes uh, just trying to get from, um, let's say, Bulverde to, you know, um, I'm sorry, uh, what is it, uh, Lotus area, all the way around past USA, uh, uh, UTSA, all the way over to, let's say, the Forum over there on 35. So, yeah, that that can be quite a quite a problem. So, where the location is. Also, how is it, right? So what's the culture at the place? Uh, are they uh, very rigid in rules? Are they very lax? Um, you know, what's the dress code? Uh, make sure everything kind of fits with the culture that you are uh, looking to move into. Once again, I talked about advancement before. Um, what is the possibility for advancement at these uh, organizations that you're looking to go to work at? Um, is there slots and times and a scheduled way to help move your career along is the job change enough of a change to move your career along in the direction that you want it to go benefits is a huge huge piece of it um i cannot stress enough to anybody out there if you're in your 20s uh, even uh, 30s if you're not looking at benefits especially um, retirement benefits 401k pensions uh then uh, you really need to start focusing on that that is the time to start um, starting if you're 35 or, or 40 even then now i'm going to think about retirement for the next 20 years um you're you're really losing out because of things called compound interest right without having a um uh, an active way to uh can get to a point where you can retire that's a that's a big deal so uh, i cannot stress enough uh to uh, think about not just um, retirement benefits health benefits how is your insurance who's their insurance carrier um do they have other things educational benefits uh what would they do if you wanted to get a certification would they pay for a test would they not would they pay for a class would they not all of those types of things uh are, are big deals uh, for jobs these days. In some ways, uh, benefits uh, even outshine things like um, pay in, in many regards. Time off. How is it accrued? How is it built? Is it lump sum? Is it, you know, pieces? How do you, how do you get that there? Don't be afraid if you're talking to HR and you're starting to get into the process, even before the interview, you can ask questions like that. How is this stuff done? Um, uh, I, I truly recommend that. Uh, they're usually very open uh, with that kind of information because they want to make sure culturally you're going to fit with their organization as well. Now, why not leave? Why, why, why would you not leave an organization? Um, and there are some really good, good examples of that. If you've been there 12 months or less, that doesn't look very good on a resume. Um, there, there are times though that, that, that can be forgiven, right? Uh, in 2008, there was a, uh, quite a bit of a recession going on and, uh, economic hardship. It hit especially the industry areas of, uh, the United States. I looked at, uh, somebody's resume and it said they only had a job for nine months and then another job for nine months, and then it, for four months. And then they had another job for, you know, like 12 months all during that time period. And it was in Detroit. And it was, um, so I'm like, wow, this person actually found work in Detroit in 2008, 2009. Um, they must be very, very motivated and very much a go-getter if they're 
doing that. Um, and it was contract work. They were taking contract after contract to, to stay employed. Those kind of things are, are easily explainable. But for the most part, you really want to stay at least 12 months on the job. Um, there's another kind of caveat. Let's say um, some benefit kicks in only after four years or five years. Let's say a pension or whatever. That date should be marked on your calendar. There, there should be no ambiguity in your mind of when that date is. Um, and uh, there was a time uh, a few years ago, I was talking to somebody, they were very excited. They had a great opportunity. They were gonna be leaving um, Broadway Bank and going to that opportunity. And uh, I said, you've been here almost five years, right? And they said, yeah, yeah, it's really close, but yeah. I said, how close? And, and they were like, oh, well, they were planning on leaving on a Friday and their fifth year anniversary was the next Monday. That one day could cost them 20% of their um, uh, 401k matching money. Um, fortunately, uh, the, the organization was kind and let them withdraw their resignation and put it in for one more day. And then they talked to the organization that they were going to, they accepted that it was gonna be a little bit different of a day and everything worked out very well for them. Most organizations are not so kind. So once again, know those dates, put them on calendars. Don't, don't you know, uh, forget the, the goal of what you're trying to do uh, by you know, doing things like uh, 401k matching money and keeping it so when you go uh, and stuff. Um, that doesn't mean I think you should leave at five years in one day. I'm just saying that, you know, if the, if the job is tenable, keep it up. But under 12 months does look a little, little sketchy. Leadership change is on the way. Um, this can go either way. You know, sometimes a leadership change, things go from not so good to great. And sometimes it goes from pretty good to not so great. But sometimes when there's a leadership change, you really want to get a handle on the new leaders and what they're, what they're doing. Um, whether it's the, at the C level, the CEOs and that kind of thing, and that guidance and direction for your organization, or if it's the CIO or even a CISO, if you're reporting on the security side, um, you know, it, it makes a difference. Find out how the leadership change is going to affect uh, your work and how things are going. So, you know, that's, that's why you'd probably want to stay. You really want to check out what, what's happening down the way. Because some of those frustrations that you had, they might just completely go away um, with the leadership changes. Look for your, a job while you're employed. And this one's a big deal. Uh, if you don't look for a job while you're employed, you could, um, you know, it, it, it's harder all the way around it. To find a job, uh, according to one statistic that I've uh, read, uh, you have to search one month for every $10,000 of pay. So one month for every $10,000 of pay, well, depending on how long you've been in the industry and what your current pay is and what you would accept for pay and what you could fit in with, this, these searches could take a long, long time. Uh, not only do you have to, to, to be able to land that job, and once again, you have to take all those other things into consideration, like culture, fit, uh, all the little pieces and parts that we're talking about. Finally, um, your inner voice could be just wrong, right? Uh, you hear it often, imposter syndrome. Uh, I'm just as guilty about it as uh, just about everybody else is in some regard. Um, you know, this kind of thing held me back for many, many years. I probably could have changed jobs many times over uh, over my tenure of two decades with uh, Broadway Bank, um, but I didn't. And a lot of it was like, man, I, I mean, I'm just not good enough to do that. I just don't know that kind of thing or, you know, and stuff. Uh, one of the problems uh, for myself, uh, I never finished my college degree. Um, so that makes it a little bit interesting, right? Uh, at Broadway Bank, I actually uh, made it up to uh, vice president um, and had 25 years of IT experience. I worked for VARS prior to working for Broadway Bank. 
Um, and there were still times it would be like, uh, I'm just not good enough for that. I, I'm not, I, I'm not qualified enough for that. So those kind of things held me back. Um, and I just want to make sure that they don't hold you back for uh, that job change. It's too late. That job is already taken. There's no place for me. Yeah, that inner voice is wrong. Um, I had that same thought in my head in 1993 that I've started too late. No, I don't have my Novell certification. I don't, I'm not in the industry. I'm a carpenter. You know, I do construction for a living. Um, you know, there's no way I could do that kind of thing uh, and stuff. Uh, and, and if there was, there's the jobs are already taken. There's already, you know, 65,000 people out there that are certified to um, work on uh, Novell systems. Uh, got their C and E and stuff. So how could I possibly get in that field? How, how could I possibly, you know, do anything to advance myself? I was wrong. In 1993, I guarantee you I was wrong. And if you're in that boat today, I guarantee you, you're wrong. <laughs> there are plenty of jobs out there. You just need to go fight for them. You need to find them and keep searching and fight for them, and you will find the job that you're looking for. So it's not too late. Those jobs are not already taken. Um, the other day, I got a new washer and dryer, and one of the guys um, that was delivering the place kind of got around to, so what do you do? I said, well, I'm a cybersecurity uh, guy at a local financial institution. And he was like, oh man, I, I'd like to do that. I was kind of looking into that and stuff. And I go, you know, if you can put in a washer and dryer, you understand the processes. You can understand procedures and everything else. You, you've got to do this, this, and this, and this, and it works. If you have any kind of uh, background that would kind of make you think of that, I said, yeah, I bet I bet I know what you're thinking. I told him, I said, you're thinking there's probably no jobs available for, for people like you that, you know, in, in this field, you want to move over. I said, you're wrong. Yeah, you know, go find that job at a help desk. Go find that job, um, you know, doing uh, the hardware team or whatever and work your way into another job because it's, it's easier once you get that first job in IT to move around. So... Um, my first job in IT after doing construction for over a decade was um, as a sales assistant for a VAR. Um, I made the sales proposals up. And the reason I did that is because I could tell the difference between a parallel cable and a SCSI cable at the time. So the printer cable, SCSI cable, by the way, it's a 36 pin versus the 50 pin connector on the end. Um, still know the difference. <laughs> Probably have one in this building somewhere. Um, so that's the kind of deal. It's not too late. The jobs are out there. Um, you have to fight for them. You have to, you know, overcome your own friction to go get them. Don't wait for an opportunity to come to you. Even if you're in the IT field and you want to try something else in the IT field, once again, you're going to have to go out and seize the job. You're going to have to go out and find it and fight for it. So go get a good resume. Get it looked at. There are people that will uh, evaluate your resume that are right here inside of B-Sides right now. Um, go and uh, get moving forward on different uh, things that you can do to, to learn uh, what's going on. Uh, if you don't know how packets move through a network, that's a great start. Um, uh, I was very fortunate. My ham radio um, uh, hobby um, helped me out on that because I was able to learn how packets move through networks by looking at them over the uh, air on, on VHF radio. Uh, I helped build packet radio networks um, and, and did that for six or seven years before I ever got into an IT field. Um, I waited too long. I should have gotten moved a little bit faster than that. Um, but, you know, that's the deal. You, you got to keep on uh, moving forward and, and getting things done. So don't wait for an opportunity to come to you. To, in that fact, have you ever heard of the cult of the Dunn Manifesto? Uh, Bree Pettis uh, came up with that. Um, matter of fact, I got a link. I'll drop it in the uh, Discord channel in the breakout and also in the track three in the thick of it. Um, Let's see here, make sure that that's going good. Um, 
he kind of came up with this. It's imperfect and it, it has problems, but it, it's 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 it got some really good points. How do you get done with anything, right? So three states of knowing: not knowing, action, and completion. I'm not going to read them all to you. You know, except things are a draft. There's no editing stage. Yeah, this is good, and especially if you're learning. Pretending you know what you're doing is almost the same as knowing what you're doing. Just accept you know what you're doing, even if you don't, and do it. Right? <laughs> Banish procrastination. The point of being done is not to finish, but to get other things done. The more things you get done, the more things you can get done. So get things done. Get that resume out there. Go for that job. Yeah, once you're done, toss it. Laugh at perfection, right? If you wait for that perfect resume where every word is perfect and exactly what you're waiting for and blah, 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 you're waiting too long. You know, give it a best shot, get it reviewed. If they like it, get it out there. People with dirty hands, uh, without, I'm sorry, people without dirty hands are wrong. Doing something makes you right. Doing it, just getting out there and getting things done. Um, gives you the right to be out there and getting things done. Yeah, fail, failure counts as done. I went to that job interview and I didn't get the job. Oh, well, next. As a matter of fact, here's a goal for you. I want you to set how many jobs that you go on an interview for and you don't get. You get five of those, then you win. You're right. You just consider yourself a winner because you've at least put yourself out there five times. I bet you can't make it five without getting a job. Destruction is a variant of done. Can't put this one on jobs. Um, if you have an idea, publish it on the internet. It counts as the ghost of done. You know, blogs are still a thing. YouTube is still a thing. Go out and research something and put something out on it. Uh, get some information out there. Um, help at a B-Sides. Help at a Texas Cyber Summit. Get yourself uh, networked into doing things. Done is the engine of more. And it... it just doesn't get any cleaner than that you know if the, the more you do uh, the more you're done the more you get done so uh does anybody have any questions or anything is there any questions in chat or in the uh discord here i just want to go ahead and look i know this is supposed to be an hour long but yeah it doesn't really take that long As a matter of fact i almost wish that you'd spend the next 30 minutes working on your resume, right? <laughs> working on your ability to go out and find that next job if you're looking for another job or to make the job that you currently have better. Paul, I love, uh, again, thank you so much. I love your story and how you, you tell us how you were in one career and you didn't have any experience and you got into IT and how you phased into cybersecurity. A lot of folks now that are trying to get into space, they feel like they have to run to college and get a degree. Uh, yeah, which you have to be done, case. right? And, yeah, and you it, don't have to be done. <laughs> yeah, it isn't the case. So I, I love your story, your personal story, how you can share that with folks out in the space that it can be done because a lot of young people or a lot of people that are looking to transition out of one career into another um, and they feel like they need to just jump into a cybersecurity role. And sometimes that's not the case. Um, we're, I, I think this space as a whole, we're, we're, we're in a place where a lot of companies don't have the capability to do on the job training. You've got to know some, you've got to have some understanding and some type of hands-on experience doing something or some inclination showing folks or showing the hiring managers in HR that you've got to, you, you have the ability to learn. Um, getting that cert or, or the degree, you have to bypass the HR or the gatekeeper. But I mm -hmm. think um, if you can somehow bypass that by showing um, your activities in capture the flag events or any type of uh, cyber or IT related events or networking events, can, can you go kind of more into that on, you know, no, when you're. When you're Absolutely. Looking, I, I'm a mentor also for um, Cyber right. Patriot. Um, right. Not this year, but Cyber Patriot is a great organization to, to, to uh, get involved with. I just got through seeing another talk from uh, a, a kid here at LEE High School, um, which is my alma mater. I went to Larry. 
that, that school uh, long ago. And um, the, the work that he's been doing over at the, the museum uh, is, is phenomenal. Uh, being with those kids and being a mentor for them, helping them with things as simple as, you know, how does SSH work? Or how does HTTPS work? Or how does encryption work? Um, you go learn it yourself and you tell them, or you already know it and you tell them, whatever it takes. Um, but uh, one of the things I do encourage everyone to do is to get a degree uh, if you can. Uh, if you're predisposed and you can go ahead and get it done and you have the capabilities of getting it done, um, there are a lot more opportunities for work for you. Uh, it is difficult for me. Uh, I, I can't tell you, I throw my resume around uh, a lot while I was um, kind of looking for different positions. I did not get callbacks I, on, on a vast majority of them because I guarantee you when they looked at my resume versus others, it didn't say degree. And a lot of the jobs out there demand a degree. And I'm like, I got 25 years of experience in IT um, and securing financial institutions uh, and, and keeping them up and functioning and running. That didn't matter to these people. They were just HR. They, and, and sadly, they it never got to the hiring managers to understand the, the difference there, right? Um, so uh, get a degree if you can. If you can't get a degree, that's fine. There are tons of work out there, tons of work. Um, and once again, mentor Cyber Patriot kids. Um, get involved with these organizations here. I, I, if, once again, on your, on your resume, volunteer for Elf Louise. Uh, or you know, some other charity, go to the food bank, put that on the resume, you know, say that not only you're, you're helping, you know, uh, in your field, but you're also broadly helping the community. Um, those kind of things really make a difference, uh, I think, when it finally gets to the hiring managers. Does that help, Kim? I mean, yes, it did. Of, great, okay. great info. And I, that's what I was going to say is when you're looking at people's resumes, uh, what do you look for if they don't have the relevant experience from a specific employer? Um, so again, I, 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 I echo that is just showing what you're doing in per personal development along with uh, education and certifications. Um, yeah, it, and when we hired uh, interns over uh, Broadway, um, I was part of the process there. We looked for people that, um, uh, there were a couple of people that applied. They were done. They were they they were job ready, right? The, the whole point of our intern program was to get people job ready, at least understand what they needed to do in the job. Um, for example, um, that we could only work 20 hours a week with the interns. So we were like, okay, you're only working one hour, eight hour a day, and then you're coming in Saturday at 9 p.m. and we're leaving about Sunday morning at six, because that's the job that we're looking for. <laughs> In IT, we're going to be doing some major upgrades, and so we made sure that they had active roles in those upgrades um, because we wanted them to understand exactly what it takes to do IT work. What it's not all, hey, I'm in, you know, normal hours and that kind of stuff. Um, so, if you can find an intern program like that where they're just not having you do data entry or some other thing. Um, that's that's the best kind of be in. The one that we had, had is we literally week after week after week we ran them through every single area of IT from hardware to the CIO and um, database administrators, whatever. Um, they got to work with everybody. And then the last week we said, your choice. What do you want to work with? Um, so um, that actually helped people focus on the different aspects of what they wanted to do. Um, so. There's, there's a lot of things out there than I'm just a hack in a red team kind of thing. Yeah. There, there's there's so many job opportunities out there for everything in cybersecurity. Oh, that's a good idea. Where is that? I think I have. Yeah. You want to know what cybersecurity looks like, right? <laughs> um, I think I can put that on the screen. Uh, trying to. That's your break room, right? <laughs> What's that? I said that your wallpaper, that's your break room, right? Yeah, it is my break room. <laughs> that's funny. I didn't know you saw that as a flash going by. But yeah, I took a picture of that break room and it's really nice because they won't let us into that building anymore because I oh. I work in another building. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's pretty funny. So I use that as a background sometimes for my uh, my team's meetings and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's it's fun. Uh, 
Recently closed. Second, I'm going to my history because I just pulled this thing up. Um, of course, it's showing all my slides. And here, I'll just go find it real quick. Uh, hey, Paul, I have a question if uh, you would be so kind to answer it. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, it's in the Discord, but somebody asked, can you apply to a job posting more than once if your resume has increased after a length of time? Sure, because a lot of times those jobs also change, right? Um, the way that they're uh, listed and posted. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, I don't think that's a problem at all. And especially if, you, if your uh, work situation or whatever uh, has been modified, uh, I'm pretty sure that it would not be a problem at all. And that should be what I'm looking for. Thank you. Oh, no problem. And boom. So that's what IT in cybersecurity looks like. And I guarantee you, no matter what type of person you are, you fit there. <laughs> some box, some little, one of those little bubbles is your bubble. <laughs> so, um, you know, whether it's framework or standards or compliance or whatever, um, there's just so much to do, right? And yeah, I've already po posted no, this out there in the app ring. Yeah, and thank you so much for sharing that again. It's it, it's really a great framework or a roadmap for folks to look at because um, I'm a recruiter by trade and I talk to a lot of people that tell me, I wanna get into cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Okay, what, what part? Because it is really, right mild wide and in and a mile deep um there's mm -hmm. so many things and and they still don't know so i always say look you know i i think it really is you know what what really interests you in information technology because then once you step back then you can look at okay what part of that do you want to protect then um yep. or what piece of it so uh, that's that's great and that, that's that's great because there are roles that are not technical and a lot of people think that being a cybersecurity person is you're a hardcore tech technical person and we need um, writers yes exactly people that know how Procedures. to write very well and communicate very well. And policies right right you so know uh, uh, my big my big areas are um the security architecture area and the security operations area that's my um uh, kind of bread and butter uh, areas right um, except well, okay, vulnerability too. A lot of do that stuff. Risk analysis, <laughs> risk assessment. Uh, um, so uh, I know that uh, one of the sponsors here is DDI. I'm a big fan of theirs, uh, to say the least. Um, so uh, I really recommend Frontline Six is a vulnerability management system. So there's my my plug for a, a, one of our uh, sponsors for um, B side San Antonio. All right. Hey Paul, one more question. Yes. Uh, and this is a personal question for me, is uh, students such as myself trying to break into IT, would you recommend jumping and specializing in cybersecurity right away, or would you recommend maybe getting a more general, maybe a sysadmin or maybe a uh, support role first to build those foundations and maybe get into the rhythm of things before jumping into a more specialized security role? Um, I definitely fight if you can for uh, any kind of internship. Um, it will help you in your resume down the road. It'll also help you hopefully focus on what you're looking to do down the road as well. Uh, and if you get into an internship, um, pick the brains of anybody around you to try and see what you might want to fit into. Like we're saying, this is a very diverse um, field. Uh, and so uh, depending on your natural abilities, and this, uh, there's also a document out there. Um, it's it's kind of weird, but it, I like it a lot. Um, if you look up NIST, NICE, N-I-C-E, um, and I could probably go grab that one too. I'll, I'll throw it in Discord. Um, the NICE document gives you a roadmap, basically. Uh, I, I wanna do um, this uh, this bubble here or this, this uh, uh, trying to think, cloud security bubble. 
what do I need to have to do that cloud security bubble or um, to do, um, a, you know, I'm a, a particular role in, in, uh, in cybersecurity. Um, they mapped out mainly for government employees all of the different aspects that you would require to be a CIO or a CISO or a um, SOC engineer or a help desk technician. Um, and it, it's nice because you can start using that as a roadmap. You know, if I, if I did this kind of role, I could check these boxes off and go learn these different tasks. Um, a matter of fact, it talks about, I believe, um, uh, abilities, tasks, um, oh gosh, anybody else good with a nice document here? It's been about a year since I've looked at it. Um, abilities, tasks, and skills. I think skills is one of them as well. So if you have a, um, things that you've done, things that you've learned, things you can apply, um, it's really, it's a nice document. And plus it kind of gives you a great idea of like this document here in front of me with all of these, it shows you a vast amount of roles that, that you can do in cybersecurity as well. Um, I'm trying to work with our teams to try and rewrite some of our um, job descriptions to fit the NICE document. Uh, I think it's a, a good a framework for, um, uh, for that. Um, once again, I can't recommend staying in school and trying to get your degree if you possibly can. Um, it definitely has uh, hurt me a number of times when it comes to job uh, opportunities, even as far back as 1994 or whatever. Um, the one team I was working with, they were like, you'd be perfect for the job. Oh, I can't hire you. You don't have a degree. <laughs> Bummer. Um, but in some ways, I'm kind of, it all worked out, you know, <laughs> it still worked out very, very well for me. So, uh, uh, But the main thing is, got to got to go for it. Got to keep that going and uh, get that first job. And don't give up. Just keep trying. You, you can't Absolutely. take it personal. You just got to keep going. Because it, it, yeah. it is hard. It is hard to break in. It, it is um, being on the other side. It's it's very frustrating. We've got all of these really great, smart people that are wanting to get in the space, and mm -hmm. you have so many employers that are so short-sighted because they can't see past. We got to have people with certain experience, and I get it because uh, they don't really have the framework to train folks. But um, so it really leaves the candidate or the um, the job seeker, um, you know, more added stress that they've, they've got to just be, they've just got to keep pressing on and they've got to keep pushing. Um, it's, it's very frustrating, but once you get in the space, it's definitely worth it. It is. It really is. Um, I, I, I'm very lucky. Um, traditionally, my family's in construction. Um, my grandfather started a company. My father owned that company at one time. Um, when I was a kid growing up, I just knew I was going to be in construction, basically, um, from almost the time I can remember anything. Um, but I always had a passion for electronics, always had a passion for computers, and um, uh, then got into ham radio. And with all of that, <clears throat> it really kind of focused me into uh, that technical type role. Uh, I always liked the more geeky, technical type aspects of things. So, Thanks, any other questions? What's that? Oh, I, I appreciate your insight. 